Riley Saw here. You've probably boiled water before. If not, pause this video and try it in a kettle and see what you can observe. I'll wait. You probably noticed that as the water heats up and gets closer and closer to boiling, it starts making a noise, a rattling sound. But then that noise goes away when the water is really boiling. Why? Shouldn't there be just as much noise when it's boiling, if not more? What's going on is called cavitation. Think of how the water is being heated and what's happening to the body of water as it's heated. The water is being heated from below. This means the water at the bottom of the kettle is warmer than the water above it. Just like how warm air rises, the warmer water rises above the cooler water. So the water at the bottom, being heated by the flame, is replaced by cooler water from up above. Notice how loud that is. This noise is being made by the water. But why? As more heat is added, the water gets hotter and hotter, approaching the boiling point of water 100 degrees Celsius. The noise from before has gone away. Now there's just the whistling kettle. So why did the quiet kettle start making a rattling noise, which then faded away when the water started boiling. Cavitation. As the water is almost boiling, the water at the bottom, very near the hot metal, is at boiling, and it's making little bubbles of water vapor. But most of these bubbles don't manage to rise up to the surface, because the water higher up is below 100 degrees Celsius, so the bubble collapses. At first, they collapse right after forming. Eventually, the water around them is hot enough that they rise up. The bubble of water vapor is like an empty space in the water, a cavity. This is where the word cavitation comes from. When the bubble collapses, causes a shock wave that we can hear. Just one of them is quiet, but lots of them make that rattling noise. At first, only a few bubbles, not much noise. When there are a lot and a lot of them, it gets loud. Eventually, the water reaches full boil, and the bubbles don't manage to collapse before they reach the surface. There aren't any more shock waves, so that sound fades away. So, that rattling sound starts off as the water approaches boiling. Bubbles form and collapse, making these shock waves. As the water heats up, there's more and more of them, and the bubbles are getting larger. This is when it's the loudest. As the water boils, the number of bubbles that collapse below the surface goes down. It decreases. So the shock waves decrease, and the noise fades away. Cavitation also happens with propellers in water. As the propeller spins, one side of the blade is pushing against the water and there's a lot of pressure. But the other side of the blade, away from where it's pushing, there's very low pressure. Let's do a quick digression to high altitude cooking. At sea level, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. But at higher elevations above sea level, such as in Denver, Colorado, you're more than a mile above sea level, and the air pressure pushing down on the water is less. And the water boils at a lower temperature, like at 95 degrees Celsius. Back to the propellers. The side of the propeller that's away, that has lower pressure, is kind of like a kettle in Denver. There's less pressure. 
that means the bubbles can form a little bit easier. Eventually, the propeller is fitting really fast, fast enough that the pressure on the side that gets low pressure can form bubbles without heating the water. Now bubbles form on the blade, and when these bubbles collapse, there are those shock waves. If you've ridden in a motorboat, you may have seen a stream of bubbles trailing behind the boat. The waves the boat makes can make it harder to see the bubbles. When the bubbles collapse, they make those little shock waves and that little rattling sound. This can be bad for two reasons. If the bubbles collapse while on the propeller, over time they can damage the propeller. You can see the damage here. Secondly, the noise can be bad if you're a fan of submarine movies such as The Hunt for Red October, you'll see the sonar operator listening for that sound. When they hear it, they know that there's a ship or other submarine close by moving fast enough to make that sound. So, now you know why a kettle makes that noise as it heats up and why the noise goes away while the water starts to boil. And you also know how this same phenomenon can be expensive for ships and subs. Thanks for watching. Riley Sigh out.